Hello and welcome, this is Philip. Today we're going to be creating a stylized illustration based of a completely random prompt and the chosen prompt is this one. So let's go on ahead and see what we can do. So before I start drawing anything, hold on. <laughs> I want to gather as many references as possible. Uh, these are going to help me guide me through my idea and make it as convincing as possible because I'm looking at real life, real world examples and so also, I want to mention, I don't have photographic memory of parrots in my mind all the time. So these are going to help me out a lot. So first thing that I do is I start sketching out my idea, what I have in my head. What do, what do I want to tell? So the sketching is just for uh, getting the idea out there. And it's going to be very rough, very loose. And so I'm also thinking, what do I want to say? What do I want to tell of this uh, illustration? So I'm thinking about, it's going to be a about a parrot who has been controlled by a monster before, who used this parrot as a fighting animal, and now he's let loose, or, or now he's broken loose, and the first thing that he does is attack another parrot who is non-suspecting, uh, and he's gonna be our victim. So that's our second character who is completely shocked and is thinking about, oh my god, what's happening, man? What's going on here? And so uh, while I'm sketching, I'm also thinking about composition, uh, what kind of camera angle are we looking at? Like slightly over the shoulder maybe. And we're just diving into the scene. That's, this is how what I'm thinking about, right? So I'm also thinking in terms of design. I want to make these two different characters uh, contrast in terms of design. So I'm thinking our fighting power is going to look very mean. Everything about him is like sharp, damaged beaks, damage around his face. It's gonna have like a very aggressive demeanor like this, a slightly psychotic eye. We're gonna give him a spiky bracers, um, drawing some uh, chains around his neck just to uh, indicate that he had a master before. And so all these things add up to his uh, character, right? All these design choices uh, is gonna make him the character that he is. And everything about him is just aggressive. And so if you compare that to our next our other character is like completely different. It's like our uh, other character is like more soft, has more of a, a friendly but a bewildered demeanor. And so these uh, co contrasting design choices are going to really help me emphasize the story that I'm trying to tell, right? So after I'm finished with the idea and I'm happy with the sketch and what I'm trying to tell, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. Uh, which I'm gonna show soon. So the next step right here is adding local colors and these are colors that are unaffected by any light source whatsoever and so right now I'm just deciding how my character is gonna look like so this stage is pretty chill pretty relaxed I'm just figuring out uh, what colors do I want to use and things like that that's what I'm thinking about right now so it's just pretty chill but also, I want to check about. I, I want to check the values, right? Because that's pretty important. Because I want certain elements to be very distinguishable. And so, for example, the chain around his neck, I don't want that to blend in with the feathers in terms of value, because I want every th single element that is separatable uh, to be distinguished. Uh, and so, yeah, that's pretty important too. So the next step is I'm gonna think about lighting. Uh, right now I'm just coloring in all the lines that I made and then I'm gonna paint over the whole thing and I'm just gonna keep lighting in mind. So the kind of lighting that I'm thinking about right now for this stage is uh, so we have a pretty clear and light background and so our account is gonna be backlit. So generally they're gonna be darker because they're backlit uh, and so afterwards so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the edges of our character darker, what you see me doing right now. I'm going to darken all the edges and what that's going to do is it's going to silhouette the characters and so they pop out against the background even more. And so afterwards I added all the rough shadows, I roughly added in all the shadows. Uh, I'm going to add some lighting, some highlights afterwards. But right now I'm just keeping it rough and I'm just adding all the shadows in first and, and that's the first uh, when I'm thinking about the first thing that I'm worrying about and um, yeah I'm just working on the feet and let's talk about the feet 
of the parrot for a second because I know there's going to be a lot of parrot experts who are going to say, oh, those feet uh, are not accurate at all. They, these are not parrot feet. They're not accurate. That's not how they look like at all. And uh, I know you're right. Actually, you're right. Because if you Google parrot feet, for example, which is a pretty weird thing to do, but um, if you do that, you're going to see that they actually have two of these claws up here and then underneath they have parallel another two of these claws which are gonna look like this which is pretty weird right but the reason i took so much a creative liberty with this is because i wanted to show something that intuitively looked better in my mind combining with the style direction that i went for instead of going with something that uh looked realistically accurate right so i just chose something that intuitively at a first glance fitted with the style direction and just looked better in my mind intuitively so i just thought it looked better anyway so yeah <laughs> so i'm just adding and just finishing up the the shadows and adding details also thinking about the uh, values constantly and now i'm adding the highlights and as much as i'm thinking about lighting i'm thinking about color as well so what i'm doing now is is i'm at, for the color highlight red for the highlight color of the color red, uh, I'm adding slight, like an orangey tint almost. So I'm shifting the hue slightly towards orange uh, for my red highlight. And so instead of, of going just simply using the same hue within red, just changing the values, making it darker or lighter, I'm actually slightly change, uh, shifting the hue toward more orange. And for the shadow, I did actually the same. I slightly shifted towards a little bit more to the direction of pink and what it does it's make your it's gonna make your colors so much more vibrant and alive and this technique is called the color uh, the hue shift technique uh, if you will and it's something that has been used in uh, game art a lot to make color more live and vibrant and more fun looking and so yeah that's what I'm trying to do as well uh, other than that I'm just trying to Make sure all these different materials uh, look different. The expression of the materials uh, are different, like the feathers and the metal and the feet. Yeah, so also I noticed, to go back to the feet again, I know it's kind of a side tangent, but uh, if you look at parrot feet, for example, they look pretty reptilian. And so it's almost like there's some kind of dinosaur remnants left behind in these birds. And yeah, I know yeah, what it's like whatever, right? But I thought it was interesting. So one another way I'm using like this color, uh, the hue shift is like for example the white on his face. So for example, instead of me using like a boring grayish color for the shadows, I'm using like a blue shadow, and for the highlights like a yellowish color for the highlights. And, and these color contrasts are gonna make it uh, in the end result the whole. It's gonna make the end result me feel more colorful and alive and that's what i'm trying to go for right now i'm just adding extra colors in the shadows or in the highlights in between some maybe some a little more red saturation in between you know and just finishing adding up the details and just focusing on values because i want to make everything look readable clear make sure the focus is on the right places and not too many contrasts everywhere I just want to make sure your eyes are like, yeah, this is this is nice. And that's why values are important and to make everything look clear and readable. And that's what I'm trying to do as much as I can right now. Uh, what you see me doing here is copying pasting the bracers. Uh, if I can avoid any amount of work that is like, if I can avoid like uh, extra work that is like the same, I'm definitely gonna do it to save some time and a good way to do that is just by copy pasting the same thing if you add it a little bit that's fine um, but if it's gonna look the exact same way anyway so I'm gonna copy paste it for sure yeah copy pasting technique is pretty effective it saves you a lot of time especially if you want to be efficient and quick so yeah, what I'm doing right now, I'm selecting the wing and making it into a separate layer. And I'm going to do the same thing for the tail as well. And the reason I do that is so I have like elements of the character to that I can push into the background later. 
So I can bring the focus, for example, more to the face. You're gonna see that later on. Uh, right now I'm just adding the extra detail. But uh, yeah, later on I'm just gonna push them into the background and just shift the focus more towards the face. And you're gonna see how much more clear the face is gonna be afterwards. Just finishing up the detail so I can work to the next parrot. So right now I'm gonna work on the next one. Once again, I'm just doing the same thing right here. And, and once again, in terms of design, uh, I, I really wanted to make sure these characters are really con contrasted, like in every way, shape and form. So like he's more softer looking, his, even the shape of his beak is more rounded. And if you look, for example, in the eyes, like the difference in the eyes, he, even though he looks scared, he's, his eyes are more friendly looking. And all these kinds of decisions, um, it's gonna make me, once again, emphasize the story that I'm trying to tell, right? So right now I'm just finishing up, and I'm also thinking about the most basic principles of value, which is things that are at the foreground are darkest, the things that are in the middle ground are lighter, and things that are farther in the back are the lightest. And because this guy right here is at the most foreground, of course it's gonna be the darkest. And what also this is gonna do is bring our focus to our fighting parrot as well. Which is good. And right now things looking pretty clear. Pretty... Uh, it's popping out of the background pretty much. And so that's what I want to achieve actually. Yeah. After we finish this part, we're gonna go to the background. And... I'm, I try to make the background as simple as possible because they these two characters are already taking so much of the negative space already and I don't want it to add too much noise or distraction with details uh, so their focus are still at the main characters so I just really want to make it as simple as possible without without and too much of detail just make it a background you know <clears throat> And so even adding the clouds and making as simple as they can be. Uh, what I'm going to do now is adding atmospheric perspective to these uh, elements like the wings and the tail. So they are pushed backwards. Now you can see how much more clear the face is. I'm also adding like a light wrapping. It's like a compositing technique. And the way how I do it and how I see it is like, for example, when the lighting of the sky, the color blue of the sky, is wrapping around the character, it feels more like the character belongs into the environment that he's living in. And that's one of the reasons why I use it, and how I see it, how I see it being used as well. Uh, right now I'm just finishing up the details, the, the last remaining parts, like the feathers. Uh, and basically the painting is finished. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, make sure to give me a like and subscribe and comment. I would really appreciate that. It's going to help me out so much. Uh, that's it for now and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.